Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Midnight Drawer, everybody. I'm Shane Connery Volk. I am the Midnight Drawer. Uh, it's good to be here again for episode number six. Uh, it's big number six. We got we got friends in the chat already. Super Geno's here. Paul's here. All right. We got people waiting and watching. Love it. This is awesome. Good to see everybody. My uh, my gear is up and it's running and uh, I'm stoked to get into this one tonight. Uh, we're going to be doing, if you can uh, tell by the, uh, the little sketch that I've already begun here, it is Spider-Man night tonight. Who else do we have in the chat here? I like to say hey before I get into this stuff. Kelsey Kennedy. Hey, Kels. Good to see you. Tom Slay. What's going on, my friend? One of the biggest Nottingham fans out there right now. Uh, let's see what I got. Let's see what I got here in... Um, let's see what I got in the way of Nottingham stuff that I can show you tonight. I've realized that uh, uh, Luca has shared some artwork and no one's given him shit for it. So I feel like Midnight Warriors should get a little bit of... Uh, should get a little bit of um, preview of stuff that I'm working on. So this is the uh, the panel I'm working on right now. So I'm going to do a little midnight drawer, and then I'm going to finish my night on this one right here. Uh, I can't tell you what's going on, just stuff. These panels are not finished yet, but uh, here you go. I It took me a while to figure out how to do this nighttime, weird sort of cloudy night sky. Um, anyway, once that's all scanned in, it's going to look real slick. So anyway, a little bit of Nottingham stuff for you. Um, if you guys are into it, I mean, we'll see. Hey, hey, McMain's in the chat. I know the night can start. <laughs> Tom, Tom's claimed it already. Oh, man. Well, you know what? I'm going to have a lot of cool stuff to share with you guys. Um, I got the cover to issue, well, I call it issue two, issue two of the second series, so issue eight. Um, and hey, if you guys want to see it, I don't see any Mad Cavers out there yet, so, uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll drop the, uh, drop the new cover. It's my favorite cover I've ever done, so, uh, Paul Kennedy's in the chat. Well, fuck it, Paulie's in the chat. I think I can, br I can drop this one on you. All right, here we go. Uh, if I had somebody in here to drum roll, I would drum roll it right now, but let's just get to it. Here is the cover to issue eight. Hard to fit into uh, the screen here. Anyway, there you got just the badass, absolute badass Maid Marian. Um, and then you've got all this business down here. Actually, let me just uh, let me flip to the drawing cam so you can get the whole thing in there. Boom. Lots of stuff in there. I think what I'll do is like when these covers are all done, I'm going to go through what uh, is going on in all of this. Anyway, there she is. Badass. Maid Marion. Just looking fucking B.A. Yeah. Anyway, my favorite cover. It's my favorite cover I've drawn so far. It just sometimes they turn out. Yeah, sometimes they just turn out. So anyway. There's your secret look at uh, Nottingham stuff tonight. It's it's episode six. I got like hardcore warriors every Monday here, so you all deserve to see some cool new shit. So <laughs> Kelsey brought out the drum roll. Thanks, Kels. I'm glad you guys all like it. Appreciate it. Um, we're going to get into this thing in case you're wondering, which... Um, all the Warriors know what I've got out right now, but I know there's a lot of people that uh, still watch these not live, so I uh, I like to start out with stuff that I've got out right now. There's the Shiver comic. Um, you all know this, but at the end of the comic, uh, yeah, I have this extra little story in here. I got to do something with this story. Part of me think it is thinking like, Maybe I start like a Patreon or something and like just continue the story and throw up pages as I can get them done. I can finally share this one too. Boom. That turned out great. Big fan of that one actually. Sometimes again, they turn out 
So, uh, hey, thanks, everybody. Getting lots of love on that cover. Much appreciated. Much appreciated on that. I also have, uh, this is out for Mad Cave right now, Grim Tales from the Cave. I got a uh, myself, Anthony Cleveland, and uh, my boy, Luca Romano, in color. Uh, we got a 10-page story in here. Here's a piece of art from that. It's uh, it's horror stuff, so people are getting uh, their lips cut open, and but there's also uh, just so people know, like I can draw, I can also draw other things. Here's some uh, here's some ladies looking radiant and stuff. So you know, some other stuff other than just uh, just straight up horror stuff. Anyway, Grim Tales from the Cave is available. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I think you can probably get that on Amazon um, in the U.S., Barnes & Noble. You can go to Mad Cave's website. You'll find out about that. And then, of course, uh, that's the big one that's out right now, Nottingham Trade Paperback. This one has uh, – it's got actually uh, some of my original, original drawings. Kind of cool to see that. This is my first ever drawing of the sheriff. Looks uh, a little bit different than he ends up looking. Same with uh, Hood, Allen. I mean, it's kind of neat. It's been a long time since I drew these things, and uh, my artwork has changed quite a bit. Uh, Tuck. Actually, this is uh, this is one of the original um, masks I drew. They started off looking a little bit different. Anyway, the trade is out. There you go. Nottingham trade paperback. You can get that. Same thing, go to Mad Cave's website, uh, go to your LCS, most importantly, see if they'll bring it in for you. Speaking of LCS, this episode is brought to you by Red Skull Comics uh, here on Edmonton Trail in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. If you're in Calgary, stop by. Kelly will treat you real good. He'll give you nothing but deals, mad deals. I'm actually not authorized to say that. I don't know what he'll do. He'll be... Uh, He'll just be happy to see you in there because uh, I got to tell you, it's my favorite comic shop I've ever been in. Not only is it my local, but it's my favorite. So uh, cheers to Kelly and the crew down at uh, Red Skull. Red Skull, thank you for sponsoring the show. Just checking out the chat here. Tom Slay got my tales waiting to read on the bookshelf. Best way for warriors to get the shiver book. Okay, Tom, lots of people have been asking about the about the hardcover you can get right now on amazon you can get the digital uh version of the shiver comic if you go to amazon uh you can get that it's uh, i think it's like five bucks super cheap um i'm working on getting some more physical copies printed up um when i come play shows in your town i'll be selling them there um honestly also probably like when i start hitting up conventions and stuff like that when they're back i'll have books printed to sell there as well so um, in the meantime, if you want to just check it out, grab the digital copy on Amazon, and I'm doing my best to get more uh, more of the hard copies printed off. Got a lot of people who pre-ordered those books. Awesome, awesome. Great. Well, I'm glad that uh, people are getting the trades and enjoying the stuff, enjoying what I've got out so far. What I don't have out right now is a Spider-Man comic. But um, I used to draw a ton of Spider-Man. That's what we're doing tonight. We're doing a Spider-Man drawing. And actually, I kind of need it right now because it's been nothing but like medieval stuff. Uh, lots of battles and uh, lots of cool shit in the new series. Honestly, you guys are going to love... I, I hope you're going to love the new series because I'm having a blast drawing it. Um, but to the task at hand... Actually, before we get to the task at hand, you guys know what time it is. I just, I felt good getting on the rum train last time, so let's keep the rum train going here. We're going to get into uh, some Spider-Man action here right away. So, um, hey, hey, Chris Carson's in the chat. Um, we're going to get into Spider-Man straight away. But first of all, I want to say cheers to the Midnight Warriors. Welcome to episode six. Love you all. That's damn good. It's damn good every time. I 
could see you drawing an awesome, awesome original costume, Ben Riley. Super Gino, you're a super fan on all things comic books. I appreciate that. Well, I got to tell you, I'm doing this tonight because um, the new Spider-Man movie's coming out, I think, in December. Cheers, Polly. Cheers, buddy. Um, no way home, right? That's what it is. It's no way home. I don't know if there's any Spider-Man fans out there. I mean, obviously, Super Gino, is a, he's a Spider-Man fan since he knows who Ben Riley is. Um, first of all, is anybody stoked about this new movie? Like, have you guys... Lisa Kennedy's in the chat. Cheers, Lisa. <laughs> um, we could talk some of these movies because uh, as I'm drawing this thing, I mean, I used to draw a ton of Spider-Man. Uh, when I was a kid, loved Spider-Man, and then uh, I got, you know, I'm going to start into this thing while I uh, start chatting some Spider-Man here. So let's, let's fucking do some drawing. What do you say? All right. So I got, my, uh, I got my sketch down here, as I often do. I just realize it's, it's quicker. The inks are like the fun part, really, anyway, so... Anyway, I used to draw a lot of Spider-Man as a kid because he's super fun to draw and, you know. But, um, yeah, I got into Batman and then I started drawing a lot more Batman. As you do, get into the dark, the darker shit. But uh, I've come back to drawing a little bit more Spider-Man because um, Nottingham has, like, it's a ton of, I mean, my, my style is, I, I want to say there's a ton of realism realism not meaning like i don't draw like life exactly you know some stuff a little bit but um the nottingham stuff it's it's more realism in that like you know these characters could truly exist in the real world they're you know they're not leaping off buildings and doing crazy shit so as an as an artist as a drawer that means that I have to do, like, I do a lot of reference because it's it's funny. You draw Superman flying through the sky, you have no reference for that as a human being. You don't know what a person flying really looks like. Um, but you know what two people standing and talking looks like. And if you draw that wrong, like, if you draw somebody, like, standing there, like, just standing, there's just... It, you could make it look weirdly. It, you can make it look wrong very easily. Whereas characters like Spider Man, with all the weird body contortions, I mean, you, there's no, there's no real reference for that, right? So um, I find it like it's a bit intimidating, but it's also um, it's kind of freeing. I found like just uh, sketching this out. I found that it was kind of neat to not draw something that was like this is like the opposite of real life. Like uh, I got him squatting over as as Spider Man's often doing, just randomly squatting over shit um, in positions that are humanly anatomically impossible. I feel like Spider Man was probably a little more a little more in the real world until Todd McFarlane got a hold of him and uh, got into all the got into all the uh like weird body contortions and all that anyway um hey hey devin chamberlain's in the chat a little late you're here that's all that's that's all that matters you want to be a midnight warrior anytime after mid midnight buddy that's all it takes tom slay new spider-man looks great need to binge watch the last couple yeah you know oh super gino you think miles morales might show up see i don't know about that in the new movie um because, of course, they're doing, like, it's like the multiverse thing. So um, some of the, yeah, the, obviously anybody that's seen the, the preview, spoiler alert, like some of the uh, Sam Raimi characters are in there. Doc Ock. Um, who else is it? And then there's some of the uh, Andrew Garfield characters are in there. Electro's in there. Um, yeah, so... Sorry, I got uh, my my brain just shut off because I'm drawing these bricks, and I there now I got it right. 
Ha! Super Gino bringing up Powdered Toast, man. I haven't thought about that in a very long time. Okay, so I've got, obviously, now, okay, we got Spider-Man crawling down this, I, let's call it, let's call it a New York chimney. Um, I decided to go with, like, a very weird thing here where his knee is kind of above his head. Not something any human being could really do, but hey, he's Spider-Man, so he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Okay, I kind of wanted to get into the inks on this sort of quick, so I I, uh, I penciled it a little tighter before we started. Just because, um, again, I don't do, I do more like realistic poses and stuff on Nottingham, so I was like a little freaked out to do some sort of weird Spider-Man pose, but that's actually looking pretty good. Um... Should do a watch party. Super Gino, I mean, I don't know if we'll do that on the Midnight Warrior, but I'd love to hear your thoughts once you see the movie come out. Um, you're not going to see a ton of his outfit here because I was going to ask which Spider-Man outfit I should draw since there's like a fucking million of them. I'm going off of, um, I have, uh, this is actually the original cover. I don't actually know if it's the cover. It's just the original Spider-Man uh, appearance. So I'm just doing the vintage, I'm doing the vintage costume. I'm not doing, I think, okay, I could do the big Todd McFarlane eyes, but I think I might not even do that. Uh, okay, here's something I've never drawn. Okay, so he, now this is, <laughs> whoever, you know, like Steve Ditko, des I think it was Ditko that designed this costume. I, I mean, how the fuck he thought he was going to draw this thing a million times over with all the little lines and shit. Well, anyway, let's do our best. Let's start with what we know. Okay, here's a boot. The lines go like this, and then they go, you get these things. Yeah, okay. Uh, glove. Like that. I think this arm... This might not be exactly right, so for any, like, super diehard Spider-Man fans, I might fuck this costume up a little bit, but let's just call this the, uh, this is the Midnight Drawer Spider-Man, so, uh, so be it. And then the back, I think, shit, I'm gonna need some reference for this. What does the back of Spider-Man's costume look like? And this is what everybody wants to see. It's the Midnight Drawer Googling reference. Spider-Man, back of costume. This is how you do it. This is a window into the drawing process, so. <laughs> that delt muscle. Oh, okay, so yeah, I was going to fuck it up. All right, so it's like. Here's the Tom Holland. Here's the Tom Holland costume. Okay, so it doesn't do that. This comes around here, and then it just... It's really confusing. Oh, okay, so it just comes around the back. All right, all right, we're getting it. This comes around the back. Yes, and then you get the logo in here. All right. Okay, I'm back. Sorry for the... Uh... <laughs> This is what happens when you don't draw a character ever. Okay, and then the uh, and then the back logo here. And then we can start inking this thing. And get right into it. Okay, and then Let me make this come like that. Uh, okay. Somehow that's going to make sense. And then his fingers have this. 
I was just going to do this mostly in the ink, so. As long as I have a rough guide here, then we can get to it. Okay. Most important part coming up. I'm going to switch just to straight drawing cam here. Most important part. <laughs> I love it, Tom. SCV original variant costume. That's exactly it. We're doing, okay, we're going to do sort of the classic eyes here. Yeah, so they just sort of flare up. It's funny, when I was a kid, I was a, I mean, I'm still a huge Todd McFarlane fan, but I was a massive Todd McFarlane fan, and I love the big, the big giant Todd McFarlane Spider-Man eyes, but now, I don't know, kind of gone back to just liking sort of the traditional taste change as you get older. Okay, so now with the face mask, he's got this little oval here, and then the shit all radiates out from there. One going down the center of his head. I guess, you know, it's not actually as complicated as it seems. This one I'm going to pencil in because I want it to be right. Okay. All right. That's looking a bit more like Spider-Man. Chris Carson, continuity matters, but we're flexible. Chris, look, I know you watch some of these. Uh, you watch superhero movies like i mean the continuity is all fucked up all the time on these movies so does, does continuity really matter you know like when it comes to this new spider-man movie i just hope i hope it's just it's good it's so funny like there's so many i know like the new ghostbusters movie is out and you know people are pissed if like this one has kids the last one had women were the leads it's like who fucking cares just make a good movie i don't really care what the deal is as far as like you know any gimmick they're gonna try to have like in this movie the gimmick is the multiverse right so it's of course they're teasing um toby mcguire and andrew garfield spider-man to be in this movie like that's cool and everybody's like really obsessed about that happening but honestly if the movie's shit, none of that matters. Like, if the story sucks, none of that matters. So, I just hope that the movie's good. But we'll see. Okay, gnarly finger here. Odds that Silk make an appearance in No Way Home. Tom Slay, I have no idea. I feel like any number of characters could show up. You know, what you don't want to do, okay, I'm going to just go on like a uh, a bit of a nerdy tirade here, but that's part of what the drawer is about. You know, we talk rock, we talk comic books. Now it's a comic book rant. Um, everybody complained about Spider-Man 3, like... Uh, the last told me Maguire Spider-Man and for good reason there were too many fucking bad guys in that movie and I just hope that they've learned from that and haven't put like a million bad guys you know or a million characters in general like again I don't know learn from your mistakes Hollywood um anyway yeah I mean Spider-Man 3 was not a great movie Uh, oh, my pen's almost dead here. Yeah. I feel like uh, Spider-Man is a little bit of a uh, a tricky thing to draw for a uh, live drawing like this, only because he's got like a million little details. Anyway, we're going to fly through these bricks. Fly through these bricks. Hey, you know the drawer at this at this point, 
Midnight Warriors, you know the drawer. Most of this shit's going to be black anyway. I don't care if it is a Spider-Man drawing. It's probably going to get significantly blacked out. Um, you're probably saying to yourself, holy shit, drawer, you're really good at bricks. I know that that's what people have been saying out there. Uh, it's, it's out. People have been tweeting about it. Um, and you're right. I am good at bricks, and it's because I used to be a stonemason in um, one of my real-life jobs. Shout out to Rocco Masons. My buddy Ryan Watson, if you're ever in Saskatoon, needs stone work done, he's your boy. Um, he was my boss and mentor. We did lots of good work together. Learned lots of shit on that job. And it's funny, the things that you learn uh, in the real world that help you draw comic books, like uh, being a stonemason for like three years. So now I know how to draw bricks. I saw I see a lot of comic artists get them wrong, and that's frustrating. Chris Carson. Looks like we're getting Sinister Six. Yeah, we might be. Super Gino. Yeah, see, I don't know about Miles Morales, Super Gino, because I just think they're going to wait. I mean, they might tease him. But he's, you're right that he's such a popular character right now, but I feel like for the reasons I just said, like I don't know that you want to bring in too many, especially a character like that. Like they got to bring them in right. But hey, who knows? Kelsey Kennedy. The reason I've enjoyed Tom Holland is because he's supposed to be a kid. True. Toby didn't give that vibe. Well, yeah, I think Tommy McGuire, wasn't he? Kelsey, you're like, you're definitely right. Like he was a little bit older. There's no doubt, um, but he, because wasn't he, I'm trying to think, like, he must have been, he must have been near 30 by the, uh, by the end of those movies. Though, I will say, um, super comic book nerd rant here, you know, at that time in the comic books, now, I'm sure, like, Super Gino, you'll probably know more than me, I mean, Peter Parker was older by that point, so I think, I don't know, maybe they were used to having, like, an older Spider-Man, but I do, I agree, I like the Tom Holland, you know, especially in um, Homecoming, is very, like, very much looked like a high school kid, and uh, that's the origins of Spider-Man, obviously, so I agree with you, Kelsey. If they do Miles, it'll be post credit scene. Tom Slay, now that now there you might be right. You're right. I think if they do it, it'll be something like that. But uh, hey, it remains to be seen. Um, we will see when the movie comes out. I'm taking two seconds to concentrate here. I mean, you all know now as well that if I fuck any of this up, the jar's got lots of white out at his disposal. So uh, these go, see these stupid little spider webs go, yes, down. If you start them right, they're not that difficult. If you start them wrong, <laughs> by the time you're like three quarters done, it's all fucked up. Anyway, that looks at least good enough. You know, Spider-Man's not that hard to draw when you're drawing them kind of like straight on, but an angle like this just see it's see some of these webs maybe are getting fucked up. You're all you're gonna lose it. You'll lose it in the uh in the eye anyway. Throw in some of those back muscles, ribs. I won't give you another anatomy lesson. But I will say that, uh, I mean, it's like everything else in drawing. Everything's kind of hard. These back muscles are odd. Luckily, you can fake back muscles. This thing is done. We got backups. 
fresh micron. What a feeling. I'm concentrating here. What am I missing in the chat? Super Gino liked Andrew Garfield in the costume, joking and stuff. Yet, I I liked. I thought Andrew Garfield was great. All in Spider Man, definitely my favorite. Chris Carson says. Super Gino, worst case scenario, black him out and make him. Uh, yeah, the black costume Spider Man. Super Gino, I thought about it. I really did, but I figured I everything I've drawn so far is very blacked out and dark so i was gonna try something a bit different here um yeah you know as far as the movies go i thought again all the actors just like uh, when we were talking about batman i thought all the actors were good i know i thought andrew garfield was great um i mean those original Spider-Man movies uh, with Tobey Maguire are just like, they're classics. I really feel like you can't, especially the first one, uh, the second one still holds up, but, you know, that was the first kind of really, I don't, like, the level of special effects and stuff in that movie, like, there's just so much about that movie that are, give birth to, like, all of the, um, Marvel stuff we see today so you know I feel like that first Spider-Man movie especially has to be given a bit of a break I know people shit on it sometimes but um, yeah I thought it was great there we got this thing more or less outlined there he is <laughs> this knee maybe looks weird but I don't know. Look at some of that Todd McFarlane stuff, and he's just doing weird shit, so whatever. Sometimes you got to give it a go. <laughs> Super Gino quoting um, uh, Randy Savage as Bonesaw. Don't think I wouldn't catch that, Super Gino. I got you for three minutes. I mean, any movie that's got Randy Savage in it as a cameo and Bruce Campbell, come on. Let's I got to show you my Army of Darkness poster here one of these times. Okay. Now, let's just... The Toby Kirsten chemistry worked well for Spider-Man 1. Agreed, Tom Slay. They had it going on, that upside-down kiss. Like, holy shit. That was the business. Don't tell me it wasn't. Uh, okay. Now, when I'm doing, like, the dark shit, like the Batman stuff and whatever, I just get in there and start throwing blacks around because I feel like mostly it's going to be black anyways. But this one, I think, hmm. Well. I know mostly this thing's going to be black, so we're going to make that black. And you guys know the drill on this, too. It's halftime. It's time to throw the ink around, so uh, let's get into another, uh, another dram here. And then let's throw this ink around this shit and get her done up. Everybody, Frank Silva's in the chat. Mad Cave Zone. Frank, what's going on, brother? Thanks for jumping on. You bet. It's Spidey time. You're just in time. The black, the big heavy blacks are coming out. All right, let's get busy. Frank Silva, I would do a mean black suit. See, Frank? Now, we were just talking about that, pal. I was going to do it. Full disclosure, I was going to do it. I was just going to black suit it. But then, well, okay, I'll say this. I I probably should do the black suit. Uh, I'm going to do more Batman drawings. I think we decided after the last uh, episode, the Batman episode, um, 
And there's so many, just like Batman, there's like so many Spider-Man costumes. So, okay. Let's just call it a deal. Two Midnight Warriors asked for it, so you're going to get it. We'll do, we'll do black costume Spidey here. Um, one of these times. Chris Carson, blanking on which DVD had the original Spider-Man. Yeah, I forget what that is, Carson, with the when he um yeah, he's at the World Trade Center. I know it's so like seriously, like yeah, tough to watch, honestly. Um But yeah, I remember that. I think I'd like to say that I saw that in the theater, like the first preview for Spider-Man, um, when he's swinging off the World Trade Center. Or between it, I think, was the thing. But yeah, I forget. I forget what uh, what movie that was on. Also, you know, I'm surprised. I'm only surprised at the uh, the uh, <laughs> the OBS music fans out there. We're talking Spider Man One. Everybody's favorite Canadian rock and roll band had a. Uh, it was a pretty massive hit in that movie. Trivia time. What? endearing classic Canadian rock band featuring uh, some guy who I can't remember uh, had a song in that movie. 2001, it came out. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for this to come out. I, I won't move on until somebody says it. Hint, he owns, still owns at least part of the record label that we used to be signed to. <laughs> Pete Michaels is in the house. Harlequin, honeymoon, sweet trooper. Um, Pete, I got to tell you, I wish that those were the real answers. I wish those were the answers and not the real answer, but yes. <laughs> Chilliwack. Uh, Chris Carson, you are right. It is Nickelback with, is it Joseph Scott or was it Josie Scott from what band was that? Yeah, Nickelback. That was the beginning of Nickelback taking over the fucking planet. And they're still there. I don't know if they have still taken over, but they're they're still doing it. Anyway, yeah, I uh, remember hearing. I remember two thousand one. Fucking heard that song. Oh my god, you all probably remember how much you heard that song. Chad Kroger, yeah, it was Kroger and. Uh, <laughs> platinum blonde hey pete and mcmain i i swear to i swear every answer you're giving is better than the real answer and so i i thank you for that i wish chilliwack i wish chilliwack had uh a song in the spider-man movie obs opened for chilliwack one time a couple three three four years ago it's one of the funniest scenes i've ever seen the singer for Chilliwack played the show. He literally walked right from the stage to the money tent. Like, that's what you do. You go get paid after a show. But, like, he literally walked like he finished. Just pieced out right to the money tent, got paid. They jumped in a van and left. Like, no hellos to anybody. I uh, I got to say, I I respected it. Okay, I've been babbling here, and now I'm, I hadn't planned on making this all black, but I think I might just kind of fade the black into the mortar here. And then I'll add some business to it after. Okay, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Haha, <laughs> duck in the slugs. Tom Slay, yeah. 
Sorry, Tom. Nickelback's going to be in your head all night tonight. Yeah, that's my gift to you, pal. <laughs> oh, man. I got to tell you what, though. Um, not the biggest Nickelback fan, but I will say, you know, I can never give anybody shit for getting that kind of success. I mean, insanity. Like... Good on you, Chad Kroger. And no, I have never met him. The man paid my, paid my, uh, he handed me a bunch of checks while I was on his label, but never met him. That's a lie. You don't actually get handed any checks in music. You get handed bills. You get handed bills and not dollar bills. Tom, they aren't bad. Nah, they got good tunes, Tom. Come on. Uh, okay, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going with the rest of that chimney, so let's leave it. Let's get some. I want this hand to pop here. Get that tricep muscle popping. I'm really, really going to attempt to be sparing with the with the ink on his costume. Though, okay. Okay, I just thought of something. Let's see. It may work. I was just thinking that now I just went on this whole fucking tirade about not adding too much black to the costume, but... I do like, I will say, uh, there are, are artists, and actually, like, again, this first, this first drawing, like, his costume's really blacked out. Like, I like the really black, like, when they make the blue of his costume really black, I dig that. So, maybe that's the compromise. Maybe I just, uh, the blue parts, I will get a lot of black in there. Yeah. Yeah, I started doing it, and I already like it. Okay, done. Plus, God knows what what fucking muscle he is pulling by this uh, <laughs> doing this pose that I put him in here. So I'm gonna black out this a little bit. Sure. Tom Slay, it's okay. I'm an Avril fan. We're all Avril fans, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Super Gino, I'm just reading your uh, comment here. Yeah, I mean, basically, Super Gino, you're right. Everybody shits on Nickelback, but, you know, you don't get that big without actually having fans. Um, but I also, I don't want to alienate anybody that actually legitimately dislikes their music. I don't, I don't want to say that you people are wrong. Where do I fall in that category? Well... I mean, now that Chad's not paying those uh, those bills anymore, I'll just say, I'm not a huge Nickelback fan. There, it's out. It's out in the world. Okay. <laughs> Pete, I'm always angsty, Pete. You don't play rock and roll for fucking near 20 years and not have some angst. That's that's just part of the deal. Okay. Midnight Drawers drawing tip of the night. Uh knees are made up. It's all it's all fake. And what I mean by that is, you know, Fucking bend your knee and look at it in the mirror. You can't discern what the fuck's going on in there. So I'm not going to bother trying to make it look like much of anything. Okay, so there's going to be shine on top of the costume here, but 
all of the stuff that's not red is going to be black. I already know, by the way, that I'm going to, after the show, I'm definitely going to, uh, I'm going to color this in. Plus, you all know the drill. Probably grab the, uh, I'll probably grab the white out here, take it for a spin. Ah, damn, that, uh, that bamboo rum every night. Next time, it's uh, a very good friend of mine. Got me a nice bottle of whiskey that I'm going to crack for the next midnight drawer, I think. Super Gino, Canada also gave us all of, gave the U.S. their fave sports. Wow, hey, we give you basketball, we give you hockey. You give us baseball, though, that's my sport, so... Thank you, America. But yeah, you're welcome for hockey and basketball. No big deal. Okay, this is starting to look like something. I think it is. I'm kind of at that point that I've uh, mentioned before where I stop really knowing what the fuck I'm doing. It happens. I gotta, I really, I gotta think about what I'm doing with these bricks. Those little marks mean that his costume is shiny. I just like giving uh, I like giving y'all a little bit of a lesson here. Funny thing with this leg is it's probably gonna be all black, including the red part because it just feels like it should be. But anyway, all right, that's looking like something. Now this arm has to cast a shadow here so that it looks right. It looks like it's three D. In a 2D medium. Like that. Okay, that's getting there. Pete Michaels, baseball for life, my friend. You know it. Tom Slay, football. I don't think we give you football. Gonna have to give that one to those fucking Europeans. I mean, okay. Not, not gridiron football of course i think that is that might be a split that might be a split um american canadian invention but i don't know history buff that i am i don't actually know the answer to that question but of course it all comes from like rugby and sports like that so i don't know exactly the history of all of those sports nor should i Okay, I'm digging on a lot of this. It's going to have this neck muscle vibe has to be happening here. Shoulder. Still not 100% happy with this. Okay, a lot of this is happening though. A bit more shadow on his arm here. Just a little bit, Shane. I'm a big fan of that texture. Okay. Chris Carson, football's more religion down south, more American than Canadian. Well, you might be right on that, Chris. Uh, okay, I said I was going to do it. I was going to try not doing it, but 
one look and I knew the truth, this leg has to just, has to fade into the background. It's not all bullshit, by the way, adding these blacks. Anything that's farther away from the camera typically is going to have like a shadow under it. So um, I'm not just throwing black shit in there because I don't know any better thing to do. They're actually, actually at times there is like rhyme and reason to it. Okay. I'm never quite sure about adding a lot of shadow to his face because I don't. You know, he's got such a colorful costume, you don't really want to completely fuck it up. Got this forearm muscle that comes down here pretty much right to the wrist. Okay, that's happening. Uh, I think I'm going to do some shit that I don't normally do. Let's see. Or at least marks I don't normally make just to like. I just want these bricks to be a certain thing. Fuck, I got my hands in this ink four times already. Okay. Okay, I think this is coming along. I'm starting to dig it. I hope you all are starting to dig it too because uh, I'm a little confused on this one. I mean, let's be honest, fucking I get confused a lot while I'm drawing, but uh, like Michael Scott's, um, like Michael Scott's book says, somehow I manage. Just going to make some. Uh, this is what you call gray value, where you're like fading up from the black. You can do it with spatter. You can do it with like cross hatching like this. Tonight, probably going to go with a bit of everything. Chris Carson, thanks, dude. Appreciate it. It's coming. We're, uh, I feel like we're already somewhat nearing the end of this thing. I was going to do some more Spider-Man movie chat, but I got to tell you, I don't know. Tom Slay and Super Gino, I don't want you guys to like be pissed at the drawer, but I'm I'm having a hard time I'm having a hard time feeling these Marvel movies lately, so maybe this one'll bring me back. Maybe it'll bring me back and get me hyped again. Maybe it's one of those like too much of a good thing, but I don't know. This is the part to me that always feels a bit like um, sculpting where you're just like kind of bringing lines in and tightening shit up. I might actually add a bit of spatter to these bricks too. This is an old chimney so it gets, uh, it also has some cracks. Of course.
yeah, I think it needs a bit of spatter on there. That'll be that'll make it look pretty cool. Tom Slay's been the same way with recent Marvel movies and shows. Definitely agree. Indies all the way. I mean, I like again, okay, Tom, I'm with you. I like a good indie flick, but again, I'm not gonna just watch something because it's an indie flick. Like I like What's the easiest way to say it? I again, I just want good fucking movies. I want good art. I want good music. Often I don't really care who it's by or why they did it. I just want it to be good. You know what I mean? You want to hear a song and be like, "Fuck, that was a good song." And not have to worry about like you know, I don't know. Yeah, I just I just want good art. I just want people to make good art. To be honest, if you got the money to make a massive, huge, multi-million dollar Marvel movie, great. I like a good popcorn movie too, but yeah, again, just fucking make it good. That's all we ask. All right, don't get too designing here Shane I kind of wish I had a lot more time on this piece because it is honestly it's turning out pretty sweet um, we're closing in on the finish line here everybody I think Sorry, I keep uh, moving it out of the frame. <laughs> Kelsey, Midnight Mass was great. I love it. We called it, this is Midnight Mass now. That's what this is. Frank Silva, you feel like the indie comics have been consistently more exciting than the big two. You know what? I think you're right, pal. I mean, fine. We are the makers of indie comics, but uh, you know, I think Frank's got a point. I will say this: I will say one thing about the big two that's got to be tough. I mean, you got fucking characters that have been around since the '30s. That can't be. That can't be easy to keep going. Coming up with new shit, you know. I mean, I. Trust me, I don't feel bad for Marvel or DC, but uh, it's like that can't be an easy gig trying to continue to come up with anything that's exciting after that many years. But on the other hand, they get paid to do that shit. So you no, know, maybe I maybe I don't feel bad for them. Okay, I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> All right. Some of this may have gotten away from me a little, but mostly... I'd say we mostly have ourselves a picture here. New Amazing Spider-Man runs pretty great. I'll have to check it out, Frank. I haven't read a Spider-Man comic in a very long time, pal. Just throwing out. That's a little 90s flourish right there. Okay. I want to do... Shit. How am I going to do this? Bear with me here. We need... I haven't used this very much, so actually, I don't know that I've ever busted out the uh, the black ink spatter for midnight drawer, but whatever. Let's make a mess. Let's make a mess. That goes over the shit you don't want to put shit on, like that. 
old toothbrush. There's lots of ways to do spatter, but. And then uh, kind of get it to the consistency you want. I just want this chimney to like fade up, kind of. And if I fuck it up, I'll just grab the white out. Like that sort of, like that business right there. Yeah, that's what we wanted. This won't dry in time because this episode will be over, but uh, I'm gonna just touch that up afterwards. And then you get ink and shit all over the place. That, and I'm going to hit it with a little bit of white out on this side here. You guys know I like making the shit pop. JJ, this is so awesome. JJ, welcome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Tom Slay, what writer is on my list of wanting to work with one day? Um, that's a really good question, Tom. I don't have anybody that I'm like... Yeah, I don't have anybody that I'm like um, necessarily just dying to work with. Um, I'm more... I'm like... I'm in this phase of my career where I just like... I want to work with good people. Um, I mean... Also, I think it's a thing where, like, writers and artists in comics, like, David and I work really good together. Um, it's kind of like you kind of get these, like, magical partnerships. So, if anything, I would say I just want more of that. People, good people with good stories who don't make me draw, like, too many fucking crowd scenes. <laughs> David knows that that was a that was a purposeful shot at him because uh, right now I have uh, I have like a, an entire army to draw, and that's always a bit of a trick. All right, crew, that feels like, as my dad would say, we could call it a project before it becomes like a make work project here. Something looks off on his face here. Give me a second. Just need to round it out a little bit more. Yeah, there's definitely some stuff I could do on this, but uh, mostly, besides get my arm and shit all in the ink. <laughs> yeah, that's going to take a minute to dry, but it's going to get there. Um, well, besides a little bit of cleanup, I got shit on his there and there. I draw with the intention of this stuff all getting scanned in, so, uh, you know, the whiteout isn't going to matter. But uh, anyway, we are, I think we have got ourselves a picture. Now, if I wanted to get crazy, I'd throw in some uh, cityscape and stuff in there. Maybe I will. I will not make you all sit through me drawing a fucking cityscape. Uh, if you want to watch a guy draw a cityscape from memory, um, go watch Jim Lee do his thing because it's insane. But me, you'll have to watch me get a bunch of references and figure out what the fuck I'm doing. So I'm actually going to sign this one. Feels like the right thing to do. Quick and dirty signature. Boom. Let's clear the shit out of here and square this up so you all can see it. There it is. There's Spidey. That's my Spidey anyway. 
where is he going? Why is he crawling off that thing? Who knows? Superheroes never do anything that makes sense. They just like make badass poses and shit. Thanks, Paulie. Appreciate it. Chris Carson, thanks. Tom, appreciate that. Super Gino, you want to see this Photoshop by you with McFarlane eyes? You got it. I'll do it. I'll do it and send it to you. <laughs> Devin Chamberlain, appreciate it. You know, I got to tell you, Midnight Warriors, every Monday, um, I panic a little because just like playing live music, you get a little bit nervous and you're like, ah, is this the one I fuck up? But then like, as soon as we get to this part of the show, all I want to do is just like sit here, drink whiskey, rum, and chat to you all because this is one of my favorite times of the week. You guys are all amazing. Uh, Pete Michaels, thanks so much, pal. McMain, appreciate it. Kelsey Kennedy, all the Midnight Warriors. Frank, I appreciate it, pal. Thanks for jumping on the chat. Um, well, you guys know. Obviously, you know because you're here at this very moment, but uh, for the people that are going to be watching this later on, uh, I do this every Monday at midnight Eastern, 10 o'clock Mountain Time. Don't, don't tell them. Um, <laughs> uh, you, I would love it if you like, follow, subscribe to the channel. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter. You know, sometimes I'm on Facebook still here and there. Um, there's been talk of like uh, getting some Twitch going along with this. I'm going to be just like adding stuff to that. But like if you could uh, definitely uh, subscribe to the channel, that would be amazing. Um, I also have a couple of shows coming up. If you're in the Calgary area uh, this Thursday, I'm going to be playing an acoustic show and then just one more in Saskatoon December 2nd. Uh, those are the only two shows this year, and then OBS fires up again next year. Um, anyway, I think that's all I got for you guys. Thanks again to Red Skull Comics for helping me bring this thing to you guys. And Midnight Warriors, what can I say? I love you. You're all the best. And let's do this again next Monday. Cheers, y'all. Love you.